You're watching Tag TV. You're watching Tag TV. Hello and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan calling for jihad in Kashmir, says Indian MEA's first secretary in UNHRC. Pakistan's major terror ploy busted by Jammu and Kashmir police. Pakistan released Jesh Chief reports Indian Intelligence Bureau. And US cancels peace talks, Taliban terrorists continue attacks in Afghanistan. Keeping up with its habit of furthering anti India propaganda at international platforms. Pakistan once again raked up Kashmir at the 42nd United Nations Human Rights Session in Geneva. However, all its malicious endeavours were demolished when India presented something it does not enjoy a good relationship with the truth. Indian arguments were concentrated at Pakistan's nefarious syndicate with terror organisation, which continues to remain the foundation of proliferating violence in Indian subcontinent, a report. Showcasing its immaturity in international diplomacy, Islamabad raised Kashmir issue in UN Human Rights Council. But as always, its efforts of propagating ill-motivated narratives against India backfired since the country outrightly rejected Pakistan's false charges. It in fact informed the UNHRC that Pakistan is trying to demean India at the international forum because India's latest decision on Kashmir is creating hindrance in its continuing sponsorship of cross-border terrorism. Now this Article 370 has taken Pakistan completely by surprise. They are, they are very worried about it and they have always been raising unnecessarily human rights in Kashmir. Pakistan's ludicrous step of discussing Kashmir issue in UN comes, in spite of it, knowing that Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India and any decision related to the region is an internal affair of this sovereign nation. Baffled by the changed status of Kashmir, Pakistan is now overtly expressing its desperation to provoke violence in Kashmir and as a result of this desperation, the country has escalated the use of terrorism as its alternate diplomacy to attack India. While addressing the UNHRC, Vijay Thakur Singh, India's Secretary East, in the Ministry of External Affairs categorically stated that the Jammu and Kashmir issue is India's internal matter and that it will not tolerate foreign interference in this issue. The world, in particular India, has suffered greatly on account of state-sponsored terrorism. It is time to collectively take decisive and firm action against terror groups who threaten fundamental right to life. We must speak out. Silence alone emboldens terrorists and their supporters. Mr. President, one delegation here has given a running commentary with offensive rhetoric of false allegations and concocted charges against my country. The world is aware that this fabricated narrative comes from the epicenter of global terrorism, where ringleaders are sheltered for years. This country conducts cross-border terrorism as a form of alternate diplomacy. India's first secretary in Ministry of External Affairs, Vimarsh Aryan, accused Pakistani leaders of instigating violence in Kashmir in a bid to falsely raise concern about the so-called genocide in the region. He also held the Pakistani leadership guilty of calling for jihad in Kashmir to encourage violence in the valley. Mr. President, we are not surprised at the Pakistan's hysterical statements with, with false fabricated narratives aimed to politicize and polarize this forum. Pakistan realizes that our recent decision cuts the very ground from under its feet by creating obstacles in its continuing sponsorship of cross-border terrorism against India. 
in this desperate mind frame, some Pakistan leaders have even gone as far as to call for jihad and to encourage violence both with inside Jammu and Kashmir and in third countries in order to paint a picture of genocide which even they know is far from reality. While well, Pakistan is trying tooth and nail to convince the world about a non-existing genocide in Kashmir, Islamabad's cabinet ministers seem to have stolen pills of truth as one after another, the ministers in Pakistan government are spilling unspoken truths about Pakistan. Brigadier Ijaz Ahmed Shah, Pakistan's Home Minister, has brought a major embarrassment to Prime Minister Imran Khan by admitting that Pakistan has spent billions of rupees on proscribed terror outfit Jamaat ud dawa to attach them to the mainstream. The admission has come just days after Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan revealed that his country has about 30 to 40,000 terrorists who have been trained and fought in some parts of Afghanistan or Kashmir. Rejection, desperation and terrorism are the three most appropriate words to describe Pakistan in the contemporary global scenario. Having faced humiliating rejections from its foreign allies on Kashmir issue, Pakistan is desperate to launch noxious attacks in Kashmir and in a bid to execute its evil intentions, the country has escalated its terror-related activities in Kashmir. Viewers, this report by Newsweek South Asia will tell you all about Pakistan's ongoing terror conspiracies that are solely aimed at disrupting the prevailing peace in the valley. Various intelligence inputs are suggesting a possible terror attack on Indian army camps. This week, a major terror plot by Jaish Muhammad was thwarted by Jammu and Kashmir police as they arrested three suspected Jaish terrorists from Jammu's Katwa district. The terror conspiracy was hatched at the behest of Pakistan to cause disturbances in Kashmir. Police and intelligence agencies are working on various theories, including possible nexus between various Pakistan-based terror outfits to smuggle weapons from Pakistan and then ship them to Kashmir in view of high state of alert along Jammu and Kashmir following abrogation of Article 370. <laughs> ट्रक की जो इनिशियल सर्च हमने कंडक्ट की है उस सर्च में हमें अभी तक 6 वेपन 180 एमिनेशन राउंड्स और 6 मैगजीन्स मिले हैं अभी तक की जानकारी के अनुसार ये जो तीन लोग अरेस्ट हुए हैं उन लोगों का ताल्लुक प्रोस्क्राइब्ड टेरर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जैसे मोहम्मद के साथ है पुलिस आइडेंटिफाइड थ्री टेररिस्ट एज उबेद उल इस्लाम जहांगीर अहमद पारे एंड सबील अहमद बाबा all of them were working at the commands of their warlord from Pakistan. The terror-sponsoring country is on a consistent lookout to unleash a big terror ploy in the Kashmir Valley. Experts from across the world are condemning Pakistan for providing terrorists with crash course on cross-border terrorism. Pakistan uh, is also a breeding uh, grounds for uh, terrorism. Uh, you name any terrorist groups. Lashkare Jangwi, Lashkare Tayyiba, Gardnus, Taliban, ISIS, they're all uh, well nourished, they were well trained, equipped, and sent uh, across the borders or across to the rest of the world. And their political leadership is claimed uh, uh, that they are their assets. It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's not now, it's an open secret. Pakistan stands on the verge of getting blacklisted in FATF. Still, the fundamentalist Islamic country continues to export terrorists in Kashmir to carry out mass persecution of innocent Kashmiri civilians. Last week, Indian security forces in Kashmir neutralized a member of lashkar e taiba a Pakistan-based terror outfit who was accused of attacking the family of a fruit trader. Following the attack on the family of a fruit trader by terrorists, the forces apprehended eight Lashkar terrorists who were involved in threatening and intimidation of Kashmiri locals. The presence of large number of terrorists in Kashmir is facilitated by Pakistan as it supports the terrorists to carry out terror attacks in the valley. Pakistan stands accused of funding or aiding or colluding with terrorism within its own state and exporting it abroad. 
the international community must take a stand. Pakistan is a rogue state. Until it ceases its human rights violations and its collusion with terrorism by cracking down on fundamentalists and extremists, then the international community should institute economic sanctions and break diplomatic relations with Pakistan. Following its diplomatic failure on bringing Kashmir to discussion at the World Forum, Pakistan's deep state, that is the ISI, and the Pakistan army is now desperate to launch large-scale terror attacks in Kashmir. The diplomatic humiliation has emboldened the relationship between the terror groups and Islamabad's deep state. Hence, the military and ISI-run Pakistan government is providing huge funds and facilities to terror groups to run their terror camps in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. After intelligence reports suggested possibility of terror attacks from Pakistan, Indian forces have further strengthened security on shores and borders of India. As per latest intelligence inputs, the dreaded jesh -e muhammad chief Masood Azhar has been released from the jail in Pakistan. There are apprehensions that the terrorist has been directed to prepare for terrorist attacks against India. We have a report. According to an intelligence input, Pakistan has released jesh e muhammad chief Masood Azhar to carry out terror attacks in India. There are also reports of a Pakistan's plan to carry out a big action in Sihal Kot Jammu and Rajasthan sectors in the coming days. The Intelligence Bureau has alerted the Indian government about the deployment of additional Pakistani troopers along the border near Rajasthan. Pakistan continues to be up to tricks ever since we have abrogated Article 370 and 35A. Pakistan has been absolutely on the back foot. Pakistan does not know what to, what to do and how to act and how to react. They want to create huge amount of chaos and mayhem in Kashmir. They are not succeeding. So they have now released Masood Azhar, who is an internationally known terrorist. In fact, instead of being in jail, which they have been telling the international authorities and FATF that he is behind bars, actually they have secretly released him with a view to cause chaos and mayhem in Rajasthan and opposite Sialkot and Jammu region. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan had earlier made a statement that the Pakistan would give fullest possible response to India's moves in Jammu and Kashmir. The comments by Khan, who said there was a risk of India-Pakistan war, came on a day Pakistani Army Chief General Khamar Javed Bajwa said they were prepared to go till any extent. This entire issue must be viewed in the context of Imran Khan's statement where he talked of India-Pakistan confrontation to threaten the world and also the Pakistan Army Chief statement saying that they will support Pakistan till the last man, last round and last breath. So perhaps looking at the intelligence input it appears that Pakistan is trying to create some major problem either in the Sialkot Rajasthan sector or in Jammu area. The intelligence inputs seem to hold enough water since Indian Border Security Force had also found two abundant mini boats at the Harami Nala Creek area of Kutch abuting Rajasthan and Gujarat a few weeks ago. After an extensive reconnaissance carried out by border security forces, the suspicions were cleared off. But as a precautionary measure, security has been strengthened up further on the Indian shores. Pakistan is preparing for the time of the Azhar Masood in the time of the Hezbollah को जायदीन के लीडर्स को भी बोला गया है तो पाकिस्तान पूरी तैयारी कर रहा है भारत का काम है इस मौके पर उनको पूरा एक्सपोज करें जो जो एविडेंस हमारे पास है उन सबको दुनिया को पता लगे कि पाकिस्तान आतंकवाद हमले की तैयारी में है For last one month India has received a series of intelligence inputs regarding possibility of terrorist attacks by Pakistan 
the Indian security forces on high alert have left no stone unturned to ensure the safety and security of the Indian borders. On the other hand, Indian External Ministry has been keeping Pakistan on tenter hooks, highlighting its nefarious episodes of planning terror attacks against India. Putting no self-restraint on terror activities against civilians and foreign troops, Taliban has been continuously waging attacks in Afghanistan. Furated on Taliban's unchanged attitude, the U.S. President Donald Trump called for an immediate cancellation of peace deal. Trump has also designated the chief of proscribed Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, Noor Wali, as a global terrorist under his new executive order. The stern action came in wake of Taliban's latest terror attacks near U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan. We have a report. Just minutes into the anniversary of infamous September 11 attack on the United States, a rocket exploded near the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan. Although no casualty was reported, a plume of smoke was seen rising over the capital city, Kabul. It was the first major attack in the Afghan capital since President Donald Trump abruptly called off U.S. Taliban talks which were on the brink of an apparent deal to end America's longest war. The attack on U.S. Embassy could be interpolated to Taliban's announcement of continuing fight against United States forces after U.S. ceased further peace negotiations. In the wake of U.S. statement that the peace talks with Taliban are dead, Taliban spokesperson Zabihullah Mujahid recorded a statement with an international news firm saying, We had two ways to end occupation in Afghanistan. One was jihad and fighting, the other was talks and negotiations. As talks and negotiations were called off by U.S., the remaining power of the statement held premonition of impending terrorist attacks by Taliban. The Taliban spokesman had also added that if Trump wants to stop talks, we will take the first way and they will soon regret it. The U.S. bringing a dead end to the talks not only baffled Taliban negotiators, but has also jeered Pakistan officials. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan had visited President Donald Trump in July and advocated Afghan peace deal to pull up sinking Pakistan-U.S. relations and was covertly expecting a free way for its terrorist groups to take refuge in Afghanistan. Much of his expectations have snapped with the cancellation of Afghan peace deal that could have ensured the withdrawal of U.S. troops and Pakistan's easy access to Afghan territory. In Afghanistan, there are very many terrorist organizations who are acting at the behest of Pakistan, Army and ISI. There's the Haqqani Network, there's the Taliban, there's the Al-Qaeda and there's the ISIS. All of them have only one intent at this point of time. Firstly, to throw out the foreigners, that is NATO as well as, as Americans, and after they throwing them out, once again they want to take over Pakistan, take over Afghanistan. And Pakistan wants to ensure that whichever is the government that comes into place there, whether it be Taliban or it be a combination of Taliban and Al-Qaeda, remains subservient to Pakistani. Hinged on agreement of U.S. group withdrawal against Taliban's guarantee to stop attacks in Afghanistan and a restraint on providing safe havens to foreign terrorists, the peace process derailed after a Taliban suicide car bomb attack killed a U.S. group and 11 people in Kabul last week. Agitated on Taliban's unsavory attack on U.S. troops, President Donald Trump tweeted, an attack in Kabul that killed one of our great, great soldiers and 11 other people. I immediately cancelled the meeting and called off peace negotiations. What kind of people would kill so many in order to seemingly strengthen their bargaining position? We had peace talks scheduled a few days ago. I called them off when I learned that they had killed a great American soldier from Puerto Rico and 11 other innocent people. They thought they would use this attack to show strength, but actually what they showed is unrelenting weakness. The recent Taliban terror attack near the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan in retaliation to U.S. cancelling the peace talks had further aggravated the U.S. leaders. 
In a stern move against a park-backed Taliban terrorist, U.S. President Donald Trump has designated the chief of the proscribed Tehrik A. Taliban Pakistan, Nur Wali, as a global terrorist in his new executive order. The terror acts by Taliban insurgents were also condemned during a conference of United Nations assistance mission in Afghanistan. Said Akbaruddin, India's permanent representative to UN present at the conference, underlined the need to address the rising terrorism situation in Afghanistan. Peace and reconciliation cannot go forward in an atmosphere of terror. There is a surge of violence in Afghanistan in recent days, including threats to the election process itself. The support and safe havens enjoyed from beyond Afghanistan's borders by groups such as the Taliban, the Haqqani Network, Daesh, as well as Al-Qaeda and its proscribed affiliates, including the lashkar e toiba and the jaish e muhammad must be addressed. Presidential elections in Afghanistan are just a couple of weeks away. With U.S. Taliban talks reached a dead end, Afghan government is up against a greater challenge of shielding the ballot process from the baffled Taliban insurgents. However, Afghan security forces would remain highly motivated as their allies are to stay with them in their fight against Taliban terrorists. Large number of people gathered in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania on September 11 to remember thousands of people who were killed in the World Trade Center terrorist attack in 2001. The attacks led by Pakistan-Afghanistan-based terror group Al-Qaeda brought chills down the spine of people around the globe and is regarded as the most dreaded terror attack in the history of the world. Let's trace back the cause and consequences of the Twin Towers attack in this report. Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri appealed to Muslims to attack U.S., European, Israeli and Russian military targets in a speech on the 18th anniversary of the September 11 attacks. Eighteen years after the deadliest terrorist attack on American soil, the nation is still grappling with the aftermath at Ground Zero in Congress and beyond. Al-Qaeda, the world's most dangerous terror group, killed nearly 3,000 people on September 11, 2001 by slamming commercial airliners into the World Trade Center's Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and in rural Pennsylvania. I understand them. They understand me. You know, and you can't forget, never forget. So you can't forget what happened here on 9-11, and you still can't forget all the men and women that are still dying after 9-11. 9-11 disease, this war on terrorism. Following the deadly attack, the United States launched its war against terrorism even more aggressively. Al-Qaeda-aligned terrorists went underground in the regions of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden, the architect of this dreaded terror attack, was killed in May 2011 in a surprise raid on his hideout in Abbottabad in Pakistan, ending a nearly 10-year hunt for the Al-Qaeda leader. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.